Damn, boo. I think we were destined to be together. Canine Spirit Organization had rescued him. I found him online and I reached out to them. I had seen your dogs already, but I was ready to bring in another soul into our family. And the minute, the minute I saw his little face online, I had, to, I had to bring him into my family. So I reached out to, to Canine Spirit Organization and they you know, told me that he's probably older than what they thought and he looks like a puppy, but when you meet him, you, know, you can see that he's closer to, to 15 and that he had a little dementia. And I thought, perfect. So I drove down to California, drove through rain, floods, and even my car breaking down, but I made it. We stayed the night in California and then we made a big trip back from California to British Columbia and we stopped at lots of different rest stops and walked around and got to know each other and it's probably one of my favorite times when you adopt a dog is that first little bit when you start to get to know each other and it was great. <laughs> Yay! Welcome home, Bamboo! Welcome home! I know, you look good. He did have some very interesting social skills. He would often growl or bark or even sometimes try to bite my dogs. And eventually, thankfully, his behavior changed and he started to really embrace them as, as family. And he had this infectious hippity hop when he wanted to get his body moving extra fast because he was excited. You know, if I'd walk into the room and he'd see me, he'd hippity hop towards me. And it was just pure joy and I just absolutely loved it. I felt like he was really happy when he did that. And I took a lot of videos and shared it online and I think the world fell in love with them. Bamboo started to get stuck in pretty much every nook and cranny around the house. You don't realize how many household traps you have until you have a dog going through dementia, but he could get himself in trouble the minute you took your eye off of him. And in fact, he inspired a new product called the Bamboo Blocker, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is made out of bamboo, but it is for bamboo, and it was to try and block some of these household traps and help keep them safe. And it worked great. It was a huge help uh, because I was getting up every five minutes to try and save him from you know, coffee tables and space between rails on the banister or from the cords behind the TV. You name it, bamboo would get stuck in it and I was glad for the help. Yes. <laughs> you did it. Eating and drinking has also been a real problem for Bamboo over the last year. It started really slowly. He was taking longer and longer to eat and 
drinking was okay, but he was having trouble standing by the bowl. But I realized that the problem was really that his tongue just wasn't working the way he needed it to. And so he just wasn't being effective at being able to grab the food and move it around in his mouth and swallow properly. So for the past eight months, I have been hand feeding him and giving him water in the bowl by hand as well. He gets three meals a day and my role is to make sure the food not only goes into his mouth but that it also stays in his mouth because he does have a tendency to throw food around as it falls out on either side. So I'm the guardrail <laughs> in the eating process to make sure the food goes where it's supposed to. And when his mouth gets a little too full and he can't navigate his tongue well enough to process that food, we take a lot of water breaks throughout the meals and it helps to wash it down and it works. I feel like life is really unfair in many ways because one of the things that dogs often have with, when they have cognitive issues is they have this upset, compulsion is probably the word, compulsion to keep moving. You know, most senior dogs slow down and they sleep a lot of the day, but a dog that has cognitive issues, and I've had several like this, they start to get this like crazy urge that they have to keep moving. And that's fine when they can still move on their own. So when I first got Bamboo, you know, he would just pace around the room and, you know, bark at random things and, and he was happy. And then when he lost his mobility, he didn't lose that desire to keep moving. And so there's this inner conflict that he can't do the things he wants, but his brain is telling him, keep moving, keep moving. So I feel like that's one of the most challenging things and the most unfair things about what he's going through. One of the progressions that Bamboo's had is he is definitely severely turning left. And for a while, I, I tried to make him go right as often as possible. I had this hope that I could rewire his brain, but eventually it just started to upset him. And so we stopped doing that and I started just <laughs> embracing the left. And so as I help him, go to the washroom or if I want to be the one that supports him while he moves around a bit, it's always left, left, left. And uh, that I think is uh, a big part of why he can't stand up on his own because he wants to turn so severely to the left that he loses balance. Fortunately, for us, Dog Quality was working on the Road Warrior, which is a specialized wheelchair for senior dogs. And that really saved the day for us. And as his mobility declined further and he couldn't walk or stand on his own, I've really relied on the wheelchair to give him another option than constantly staying on the couch or in my lap or in bed. And in fact, Bamboo doesn't want to sit still he doesn't want to sleep his entire day away, so it is literally the only way that I can keep him mobile. He absolutely loves his walks, and so we use the Road Warrior as much as possible to make sure he gets out and about. And I believe that because it allows him to still go straight, because I'm helping with the leash to course correct him, I think he's really satisfied and happy uh, being able to get out and stay active, even if it means that he has to do so with the use of a wheelchair. The one thing with, with a dog with a dementia or cognitive issues is they're very vocal and Bamboo is no exception. When he doesn't want to do something or he wants to tell me something, he is incredibly vocal. And the one time where he is completely silent is when we go for our walks and it just makes me feel like we still have something that gives us joy every day. So I'm really happy that the weather has improved and we can do a lot more walking because that's such a big part of who he is. And uh, it's a huge part of my you know, sort of dementia formula for, for keeping us uh, happy and, and having these, these really special moments. Yes, it's incredibly challenging. And I, I will, I've been through lots of medical situations with so many of my dogs and I will 100% say that dementia or cognitive challenges are the most difficult to manage. And 
I'm I'm constantly working on my own level of patience to be a better mom for this because you know it's not always easy. Bamboo and I go through this sort of roller coaster ride where you know we'll we'll have a few weeks where I feel like I am connected to him and I understand every time he vocalizes I'm I'm getting you know it within one or two guesses of what he needs and we find a nice rhythm and we find these these moments that make it all worthwhile and other times I can't figure it out sometimes I think it might be a stomach ache or gas or maybe you know a headache I have no idea sometimes I think it's internal and I just can't figure it out and those are the times where it's really challenging those are the times where you know we're getting up every two hours in the middle of the night and where I just start to doubt whether or not I'm doing right by him uh, and um, but <laughs> then we come through it and we find balance again and we find comfort and we find moments of joy and uh, that's what makes it special, right? That you have, of course I don't want him like this. I want him to have his freedom back and his health back. But, um, but there's so much life in those eyes and as long as him and I can find times throughout the day that where we feel content and where we feel like there is still life worth living, then we're gonna fight and I'm gonna fight with him. Sometimes he just out of the blue will just like push his little head into my neck and keep his head there. Like he just needed touch or comfort or love at that moment. And you know, he is the world's greatest snuggler. <laughs> literally the best snuggler you know you could ask for and so you know when we have that that balance we have such special like sleeps together and that's to me worthwhile and worth the challenges that come with there's almost always a reason that he's being vocal so I have this this sort of checklist that I go through that if if he's being vocal, it's probably one of these things. I think the difference is a dog, you know, a normal dog, if they want to communicate something, they don't do it so dramatically. So it's almost like the coping mechanism is skewed with dogs with cognitive issues. So when they want to tell you something, they want to tell you something. <laughs> it's like this really over the top reaction, but there's always a reason. So it's up to us as pet parents to try and interpret that communication and figure out what it is they're trying to tell us because it can have profound effects on calming them. So, you know, sort of at top of the list is always, does he have to go to the washroom? The minute he has the urge to urinate, for example, it's like, I gotta go to the washroom. <laughs> and so he gets really vocal, even if it's not a full bladder. If he's really freaking out, it might be poop. <laughs> that really gets a reaction. So that's another possibility. So that's number two on my list. Number three on my list is, is he thirsty? Does he want a drink of water? Sometimes that's all it is. You give him the drink of water and you put him back down and he goes right back to sleep. And then there's a, a whole bunch of other sort of possibilities. One of which I've learned recently is sometimes he wants just some fresh air. He just wants to go outside. He loves the outside. So sometimes when I can't figure out what it is, I just take him outside and we walk around a little bit and he gets a little breeze and you just see his little eyes start to close and he can feel his body relax. And, and sometimes that's all it takes. So, and then another simple reason would be just that he wants a different position. Like, could you imagine if you couldn't turn yourself? So sometimes he just wants to be moved. I don't know how long I'll have with him, but, um, in a short amount of time, he has had a profound effect on me and everyone who's, who's met him or seen him. This tiny little dog has so much zest for life that uh, it's pretty magical and I will do everything I can to, to ensure that we find those happy moments as much as possible.